As day 45 dawns upon us, we find ourselves in the central highlands of Iceland, and we couldn't be more delighted about it. Thankfully, Torfi, our trusted companion, will be staying with us for a few more days before he must depart to his daily routine. We? Iceland. We're in Iceland, Tanner. Lagerfett. 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 Is that right? Lagerfett? Lagerfett. So we're in Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait for me, guys. It was a pretty cold night, and a dip in the hot springs is a must. <laughs> it's so warm. Is it warm? Oh, yeah. Is it? Is it warm? It's hot. Oh, is it really warm? Yeah, I bet it is. It's so warm. Dude, I'll bet it's warm. It probably is. Let's get in. <laughs> Iceland's location on a crack in the earth results in an abundant geothermal activity, generating natural hot springs, like this one, among 45 others on the island. As the winter months approach and the temperatures drop, the warmth of these hot springs is a comforting escape. Expedition Overland Season 5, the Nordic Series, is presented by General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And in association with Patriot Campers, the ultimate in Overland Trailers. And by X Overland's official apparel partner, Vertex. <clears throat> How should we start this? Yeah, when I finally met up with Exoland here in Iceland, I didn't really know what to expect. In my mind, I was going to maybe stay with him for like maybe two days, possibly three. But somehow, uh, we're into day number eight. So I'm kind of stuck. I can't go. It's too much fun. Starting at Giordano Laundromat. This is what it looks like. We got paracords strung up all over the place. Just hanging up all of our clothes and towels from the hot spring this morning. And then I've got the Wabasa heaters cranked. It's a little bit of a sauna in there right now because we have the door closed. But by the end of the day, everything will be nice and dry. Just in time for the next hot spring. So this morning we are getting out our second Inspired drone. This is the second trip where we have gotten the secondary primary drone out. Yeah. Uh, last time was in Alaska. We had one acting up a little bit and we retired it and it is now on the wall. Merlin, we just, I just crashed. We crashed. We, <laughs> oh, it means a lot, but it's me. <laughs> and, uh, and so now we're pulling out our next spare. Just like our off-road equipment and our trucks, all of our production gear also has redundancy built in. Uh, we carry multiples of everything so that we can continue to film and keep the highest level of quality in our productions, uh, even if we have cameras go down. So it ends up being a lot of stuff. Yeah. But right now it's paying off. It's paying off right now. Let's get Rooster going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rooster's Aww. in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Rooster's like Goose's me. son. Yeah. yeah. Let's calibrate. Sai, can you calibrate for us? Yeah. You could argue that this is just a drone, but our equipment becomes a member of the team, helping us to carry out the mission we've set out to do. Awesome. It sounds so crispy. It does. It's just crisp, isn't it? Sounds like a new drone. It feels good. It looks good. I feel like these. Rooster? is up and running, and so is the day. Let's hope that Rooster has a longer life than the last one. So adding it up. And if everybody's up, let's roll. Gotcha. Well, that was an awesome campsite. Awesome to stay at another hot springs, but I am curious, where are we headed today? Uh, we're gonna backtrack a little bit, and uh, we're gonna find ourselves skirting on a fairly tough road to get kind of further into the northeast of Iceland. 
we are headed into a pretty remote region. We've crossed the midline of Iceland and are now headed to a rarely traveled route. This will be the most isolated place we've been to on our expedition. So we must remain vigilant and prepared for any unforeseen challenges that may arise. Yeah, keep a sharp eye, everybody, on the road. There's going to be probably a lot of obstacles and hazards to call, so just keep a sharp eye. Can you imagine how much work it would have been to build this road? <laughs> Not only is our location very remote, but this road was built by a local farmer in the 1970s to access his farm located in the remote highlands of Iceland. The road was constructed without official permission and without adhering to standard safety regulations. I would probably go four low in there, guys. And it soon gained notoriety for its challenging terrain and steep grades. And though controversial, this road is open for travel. It's not the first trail that we've been on that's on the edge of extinction. It's good that it's, it's drive, and we always say, if you want to go see the world, you better go see it now because it's only going to be different later. So, who knows? Maybe in the future, if we did bring our family here or something, this road may not be able to be traveled anymore. So it's kind of special. A little bump there. It's just cool. It's like going through a deep lava fields and it's mm -hmm. awesome right up These against holders? the glacier. Yeah. Damn, it's cool. We are passing three ancient calderas where the land that we are driving upon came from deep within the earth. The harsh winters, extreme winds and volcanic sands slowly are erasing their memory. We are over 100 miles or so into the center of Iceland, and the constant vibrations are taking its toll and exposing our hardware weaknesses. I was listening to rattling, and then I came out to check this about five minutes ago. I was like, must be the awning. It's a good five inches oh, out of place. Oh, it's whole rail. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Oh, you know what? There was a tall tale sign that this was happening. Kind of like... You know what I'm talking about, because we came up there and there was like, that cap is coming off. That's weird. Oh my goodness. How long ago was that? It was, like, it was like an earthquake before the eruption. Wow. We just didn't identify what was going on. If we lived in Dante's Peak, we'd be screwed. <laughs> yep. Okay, line things up. Okay. Ready? Yep. Yep. Oh, that's oh. Pretty far. Ah, uh, it, it looks pretty it's steady. Pretty good here. Yeah. It stopped nice. Yeah. Okay. Square? Nice. Now I'm just hoping that tightening things down will keep it tightened down. This is an example of getting your hands on stuff because looking at this looks great. But when you touch it, that's completely loose. But when you look at it, it looks fine. Touch it, it's loose. Get your hands on things, wiggle it, jiggle it. You'll find things that are wrong. There's an old adage that when an emergency happens, the first thing you do is sit down and smoke a pipe. Ah. <laughs> ah, I got the Gandalf on. Mm. That's eight pipes. One pipe for the each of you. Not letting a miner smoke. <laughs> <laughs> These candy pipes are crafted from authentic Iceland black licorice, which probably won't come as a shock, considering that almost every candy you find in Iceland contains some form of licorice. <laughs> there you go, Richard. Here's yours. <laughs> you know what? The world just seemed to slow down. It allows you to take in your environment wherever you are. It's good to sit and smoke a pipe sometimes. Wonderful thing, a pipe. Hmm? I said, wonderful thing, a pipe. Wonderful thing, a pipe. Well, let's keep moving. It's amazing how much of Iceland was, looks out of the way. Oh, what am I trying to say? I need to open this. A lot of Iceland looks the way it does because of the volcanic activity. That's what I meant to say. Just opening this helped me. 
<laughs> Alrighty, meaties. <laughs> On towards camp. You look good. I like your style. Bam. This is your future? This is my future. Yeah. When I'm old, and I'm sitting in my chair, and I've gone on all my adventures, okay. and I listen to all the young guys talk about their new adventures, <laughs> and I'll say, yeah, I've been there once. One of the stories I'll tell will be that of the day in Iceland where I drove over an ancient lava field at the foot of a massive glacier with my good friend, Torby. I believe this will be my first and my last skipper's pipe. It's fun to know that in the car behind me, those stories are being created right now as well. Oh, this is literally just rock crawling over a level flow. Yep. This is incredible. I will never get tired of these glacier views. Right? It's amazing to see. I've never seen so much in my life. Torvi, is that what Antarctica looks like? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But not so much gravel and, and this black stuff. It's more of just snow and ice. As we drive through the glacial landscape, Torfi explains how the movement of glaciers has shaped the land over thousands of years. It reminds me to live your life to the fullest and maximize your time because your time on Earth here is just a blip. And these places make you realize you're just here for a second. Orion has just hit the half tank mark exactly. What's your mileage say on your odometer? Since we left the gas station, we're at 124.8 miles. Cool. Cyrus, I just got a message from your high school. It says that you're not there. And they're wondering where you are. Are you, Cyrus? Driving through lava rocks. In Iceland. Sorry, can't make it to school today. Gotta drive through the lava rocks in Iceland. You have to tell them because they don't believe me whenever I tell them stuff, so. That's when you know you're living a good life, when no one believes what you're telling them. As amazing as this route has been, it has taken a toll on not only our trucks, but also a mental toll on the team, leaving us depleted and a bit, well. Oh, my underwear! <laughs> Been on the road for a while. There's underwear in my head. <laughs> I, I just need great. you guys to take this filmmaking more serious. Is that your hot spring underwear? It's my hot springs underwear. Hot spring underwear. It's my hot spring underwear. Yeah, that's two, safe, two dips in the hot springs killed it all. <laughs> Clay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got some options for you for dehydrated meals. Okay. Got what we got? Beef stroganoff. Okay. Beef stroganoff. Okay. What else we got? Beef stroganoff. Nope. And I'll beef stroganoff. Okay. Who's the funny guy that keeps giving me broke <laughs> beef stroganoff? Sometimes that's all we have and you have to eat it. And if you don't finish your meal, you won't get dessert. No mas beef stroganoff. I'll take a beef stroganoff. <laughs> There's none left. Clay went out and dug a hole and buried him. <laughs> What are you gonna have, Torvi? Whatever. Everything without cheese. Beef. Beef stroganoff. <laughs> well, uh, as rain is coming in, we're, our meals are finally getting ready. But this is the kind of thing I love. It reminds me of even when we're on our bikes or on our own travels. Whenever you get into the free stride food is normally when you're having the most fun. You've been out for a long time, so you're out of the fresh stuff. And then it always happens to be raining or something crazy, so. Good times. A good indicator of that is some freeze dried food. And I actually really like beef stroganoff. It's good. Alrighty, we're looking at the map here, and we just did a quick uh, 
spoon estimate by measuring our five kilometer section on our spoon and measuring it roughly to where we gotta go. 40 clicks in the dark. Uh, settle in for about an hour and a half, two hour drive. You guys good for it? Yeah, definitely. Cool, all right, we'll keep sharp. Driving in the dark, unknown territory. Lots of little gotchas that can come up, so stay sharp. If you start to feel drowsy or tired, we gotta swap drivers. Run into some long days here, some crummy weather here and there, cold, getting chilled out, but the team stoke is still super high. And I think that goes to say, goes towards saying about how important it is to pick the right people to go on a trip like this. That 45 days in, well, a month and a half into a trip that we're all real positive and building into each other, uh, it's cool to see. And on a night like tonight, when you got the crash land and everyone still keeps their attitude up and there's not a crossword spoken, it's just teamwork. I don't care where I am in the world. If I have good people around me, I wanna be there. Tonight happens to be in Iceland. Back in my happy place, offloading all of our data from all the cool stuff that we shot today. Torfi took us on a really, really cool drive. It's also something that Emil from Arctic Trucks recommended. Uh, Emil told us it would take about three hours to drive, and I think it took us six, mostly because we were stopping and filming everything along the way. It's a really neat drive through Lava Fields, Stockwell cool Crater. Generally slow route, but awesome, awesome scenery the entire day. Nice thing was that we were expecting to be at camp a little bit later because the we were, I think we we're about halfway on the drive two hours ago, but then roads opened up and became a lot faster. It means that I'm here at 9.30 or 10 and offloading be bed by midnight, which isn't too bad. Overall, great day and I'm really, really looking forward to tomorrow. I don't know what's in store because Corfi keeps it a secret. So we're surprised all the time and it's epic. So, all right, another day in Iceland. Good night. To keep morale high, you have to watch the pace of the travel. To do that, it's best you include rest, and that's exactly what we're doing this morning. <laughs> I just need one Anderson. Last night when we rolled in, we realized our trailer hadn't charged all day. It was at like 63%, which for a gel battery, that's getting down there for battery level. And I think I found out that our Anderson connection to the tow vehicle, this is what the connectors look like. They don't look great. They're still hanging on, but my I'm thinking I'm gonna have to replace these, my worry, if I shorten it much, is this the length to the truck if we're doing any kind of jackknifing churn or anything. So I'm gonna have to be very conservative if I have to replace these. But I'm gonna see what we got for parts, and, but I'm pretty certain this is the issue right here. Okay. Vehicle detected. Fixed. Looks like we can head back into four high. Now with everything charged up, literally, yeah, we're rolling into one of Ashley's bucket list locations. Ashley and Torvi have guided us to Ashkia, a geological feature that encompasses both a crater and a lake, as well as an active volcano that continues to shape the landscape of Iceland's rugged central highlands. There are two known eruptions of Ashkia, with the most recent one taking place not that long ago, in 1961. 
Each eruption displaced many of the nearby farmers and villagers and dramatically changed the landscape around us. This volcano is still active, and to be honest, it feels like an unnatural place to be hiking. Whoa! Wonder what caused that to happen. Whoa! What? Askia and Viti were both formed as a result of the two volcanic eruptions. Viti is a smaller crater that formed during the early eruption in 1875 and is filled with geothermal water, giving it its striking blue-green color. In 1974, two German tourists mysteriously disappeared as they tried to boat across Oshkia. Despite numerous searches and investigations over the years, no definitive evidence has been found to explain what happened to the missing boaters leaving the case shrouded in mystery and speculation. We have our own speculations of things that have happened here. A Viking saga yeah. of he, our own. This is where Torfi came, came from. from. He just, he walked out, from the hopped in his Hilux and drove off. Earth's milk. <laughs> just happened to be His here. Hilux came out behind <laughs> <Yeah>. him. <laughs> Cyrus, I just got another notification on my phone that you're not in school today. <laughs> You better get there quick, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Do you need to take a picture of this for your geology yeah. class? You did? Yeah, yeah. And you go back and be like, yeah, this is this and this and this. This is my friend's swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where my friend was made. <laughs> for me to be able to show my friends from U.S. and Canada, these places in Iceland, it's, that's huge for me. Yeah. I really enjoy it. Uh, so the Askia, Askia, I think it's get pronounced, uh, crater is one that was on my list, really high on my list, maybe number one on my list when I was researching for this trip. I actually saw a picture that somebody took in uh, Overland Journal of VD that was really, really turquoise little crater, and then the bigger lake beside it, and somebody was standing kind of on the rim, and I thought that would be a really cool place to go. All right, thanks for bringing us here, Ashley and Torfi. So yeah, I look forward to the rest of the day. This is a great start. So now we are being met with a, a big decision. We have 10 days left. There's a lot of Iceland to see and I would not go this way. Torfi's stay with us is almost up, so we're taking this opportunity to go over the maps and pick his brain for any last minute tips while we still have him around. It's kind of more similar to this route. Ah, okay. This is uh, really rough. Okay. And the good news is that the weather should be good for the next couple of days. So our options are wide open, maybe too open. We can't get fuel right here. Okay. I can call him and see. I also heard about bathing in beer. Where's that at? In a pool. Yeah. In those. <laughs> Have you done that before? Yeah, that's good. Here. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> You're right. Yeah, you can scout out there, that's easy. <laughs> He's like, I do it every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to know every good things about Iceland. <laughs> Ask you, bathing in beer. You cut it off. I don't have to be here. I can just keep. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> well, let's go that way. Sweet. That's for right now, and then we'll decide how to attack this. With a tentative plan and some great things on the horizon, we start making our way. We haven't made it far when we spot a couple of trucks on the road that look like they're in trouble and we stop to offer our help. This diesel Land Cruiser Prado isn't running right. And Torfi dives right into its diagnosis. This is the fuel filter here. <laughs> yeah, it smells like oil. Uh, like a mix. 
Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Water? Water. No, I think it's gasoline. Oh. Oh, only. Yeah, benzene. It's gasoline. <laughs> Sadly, it's been determined that it looks like they've put gasoline in their diesel-run vehicle. We think what happened was is that this vehicle's auxiliary fuel tank was filled with gasoline, and then the main tank was refueled from the ox tank, and then the truck didn't run for long. Yeah, you'd have to completely drain everything and purge the system and start over. Reprime it. It's, it's getting towed. And only option, they're still gonna have to tow it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you've got a good story. Yeah. It's very obvious yeah. <laughs> why it's not. Yeah. That's it. Remember that time in Iceland when we broke down? As we're about to wish them good luck and bid them farewell, I notice that they're about to try and tow the vehicle back to town using a dynamic strap attached to their ball hitch, an off-roader's no-no. Yeah, we should run that through. Generally, they'd be better off with soft tackle of some sort, either this one, which is um, higher strength, and this one. And that'll be just fine for them, because they're yeah. going on flat, but yeah. Take the first Those are the new bigger ones. Plus, our trucks are heavier, just in case. With just a few days left in the trip, we think we can spare a worn soft shackle for their extraction. So won't this uh, cut the string? Yeah, it might. It's not ideal. It's not ideal, but it's safer. Safer than the ball yeah. going. Oh, and I'm at... But we should have like a thing to hook up now. A shackle? You have a no. D-ring or a shackle right here? Uh, that's not big enough. All right, we'll Thank see. You. Yep, yep. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you very much. You bet. Have fun. Although we couldn't assist them in fixing their car, I'm glad that we were able to enhance their odds of reaching town without incident. We should probably hit the road ourselves and get moving. As we get down the road a bit further, we realize we might end up with some of our own fuel issues. Just received a low fuel warning on uh, Orion. So we just did some calculations to the next fuel stop. My best guess is 35.34 miles that's converted from the kilometers that we're estimating, drawing lines on the map. There's gonna be some level of deviation from that. What you guys got in the truck? Up in Orion, um, going by the gauges here, it's saying I've got well, tick over empty and 13 miles to empty. Well, one's got just a tick over half. Tick over empty, 33 miles. Addigan's got 33 miles left. Okay, so Orion is going to be the one that we'll have to watch, but historically, I've I've seen it go 30, 40, 50 miles below zero on that reserve, so I think we've got it. Yeah. Yeah, confidence is high. Yeah, with the confidence is not high. That there's actually gas at that gas station. <laughs> Iceland is a desolate place, and you are constantly reminded that you are small, and resources are thin. What isn't lacking in this place is the adventure of it all. And our sense of feeling alive is at an all-time high. Fuel gauges are showing low levels, but we might be able to make it to the gas station up ahead. The only issue is that this particular stop isn't known for always having gas in stock. If we're lucky and they have some, we should be good to go. However, if they're out of gas, we could be in a bit of a pickle.
we have reached zero miles to empty on the tundra and the Tacoma. We are just a mile from finding out our fate in the Ivy Village of Madrudler. Gas station will be on the right side. They said there's a spot there for a line that we can just pull in. Mudrudler is the highest inhabited farm in Iceland, with just a few amenities like a church, a cafe, and of course, a gas station. That is awesome. So, just kind of around here so, so we can... Sounds good. We're relieved to find that it does have fuel. <laughs> this is awesome. I know. I know. <laughs> Do you know what? Why it is like this? Because it's warm. Yeah. Because it's a lot of snow. Yeah. I like it. And before we get started, Torfi thinks it's best to smell this fuel just in case. I like it. It's possible that this is where the Prado got its fuel mixed up. Oh, uh, this is this is gas gasoline. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taste it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's just to confirm it. That's all it said. Yeah. All kinds of fuel stuff today. <laughs> yeah. Put the fuel in and dump the other guy's tank. Are we going to make it? We made it. Are they going to have fuel here? It all worked out. Oh, yeah. Since beef stroganoff is still the only meal option available at camp, and this is Torfi's last meal with us, we decided it's probably best to set up camp and then retreat ourselves to a nice farewell dinner at the local restaurant. So warm, cozy in here, out of the wind, hot food, meat. Oh, oh man. As much fun as having freeze-dried field food on the road can be, like crashing into camps and all that. Yeah, I don't think we can be a really good restaurant. It makes it more special. Where we can sit down. Yeah, exactly. So, what I mean to say is that it's just a lot more special now. This could be a McDonald's, but it's a really fancy, nice, fun, cozy spot to be eating. I don't think you could have had a better meal for our final evening together. Torfi has informed us that tomorrow he will head home and send us off on our own. These days are just ripping by. Feels like we get up and go right to sleep with a full day of stuff in between. Today was one of the better ones though. I had so much fun today. The fuel and the helping people and seeing cool scenery and then you get here tonight. You got an awesome location, great dinner that I didn't expect. Now crawl into a cozy rooftop tent get into my down sleeping bag. It's gonna be amazing. What a great day. Uh, speaking I of down sleeping travel. bags, what? did you grab your bag already? I grabbed my bag. I tried heating it up before. Oh, thank you. I gave it to Cyrus, so he needed more sleeping bag. All right. Uh, good night, Richard. Night. So every morning, Every day now, every morning, we are taking wagers on how many rocks land in the propane tank throughout the day. We've had as many as 13 and as few as two. I'm gonna say you can't look for my say good old fashioned number. Eight. Eight. Six. Six. Four. I'm going five. Eight. Eight. There's already an eight. I said it first, technically. Okay. So if it's, so if it's going, it's closest without going over, so I'll go nine. Okay. <laughs> there is two <laughs> rocks. There is only two rocks in the propane tank. That little rock, where it gets, if it gets wedged, it's a rock. 
Richard is the winner. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, Clay Croft for bringing me here. Um, without him, I would never have been able to partake in the rock in the propane tank guessing game. P.S. We are still running on the original propane tank that we filled up with in Norway. And I think we're going to make it through the rest of this trip on just this one tank. Just up ahead, we come across a group who are having trouble making it on their trip. My worry is it bending. The van has slipped just off the road enough that they cannot continue, but we think that we can use our winches and we'll be able to pull them out and get them on their way. So we're pretty sure if we pull this forward, the back end is just a little bit too far gone. And as we start pulling this up, we feel like the, the van may start to slip off the road right there. So Cyrus ran back to grab the Tundra and we're gonna back another truck in over there and secure the back line off the hub or off the wheel so it won't slip and it'll keep it there and then we'll very slow and controlled inch it up and just watch it. Nothing fast, nothing quick, just nice and slow. We don't wanna damage the vehicle because we'll be responsible for the damages. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go nice and slow and if we decide that we can't do it without damaging the vehicle, we'll just have to say, sorry. You're on your own. <laughs> the key here is to go slow. There's no emergency. So take your time and take all precautions. If you're working with winches in tandem, don't forget to let the rear one out just a little bit as the front one is pulled in. Uh, yeah, go ahead and straighten them. Straighten them. I think he's out. There's nothing better than helping out fellow travelers with the skill sets and equipment that we have on hand as overlanders. It made our day, and from the looks of it, it made theirs too. <laughs> but with the continuation of their adventure, a portion of ours is coming to a close. Torfi has reached his time limit. Yeah, I just can't stay out any longer. Fortunately, and also I have to kind of let them go out and explore on their own. You know, it's, I'm not gonna hold their hand anymore. They have to find out some new places for on their own. But in the future, I hope I will be able to meet up with them somewhere else in the world. You must sign the flag. <laughs> Wherever you want. I Coming here, I was like, I, I sent him some emails and some texts a month before I got here, then got super busy. Wow. And then when I finally got here, and I finally got to Reykjavik, I texted him and said, hey, we're actually here right now. And he says, what are you doing tonight? And then he spent the next eight days with us. Uh, F letter, but you say V. V, yeah, Tor 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 we got to see all of the beautiful sights that Iceland has to offer, especially the ones that Torfi is either proud of or excited about. And without having to look up information online or in a book, we could just radio him and get an answer immediately. Didn't know what we were in for when we first met up with him, and it was a blessing for sure to meet up with such an amazing person. He is an incredible mechanic, really bummed that we have to say goodbye but we gotta see the rest of the island he's got to go back to his normal life patch oh, that <laughs> thank you yeah thank you you get hugs too thank you man so awesome <laughs> it's been fun that's great man thank you all right yeah so i see you next time see you next time Okay, so until next time, wherever in the world, I will see you. Until next time.
Now with Torby gone, and our hearts heavy, we know just where to go. And it isn't far. It's now time to start the final chapter of this incredible Nordic adventure. But first, a beer bath seems like a good idea. It's refreshing mm. and freezing. <laughs> <laughs> 